Hi, welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Alice, Associate Professor in Microbiology. In today's lecture, we will be seeing about toxoplasmosis. So, the learning objectives for this lecture will be the discovery of Toxoplasma gondii, the morphology of this parasite, the life cycle, the mode of infection, the various clinical features, its laboratory diagnosis and treatment, and the prevention. So, Toxoplasma gondii was discovered by Nickel and Mancox in the year 1908 in a rodent called Tenodactylus gondii. And that's why this is named as gondii. And uh, toxo means uh, arc. Okay, the, when you look at the morphology of the tachyzoid of Toxoplasma gondii, it looks like an arc or a bro, uh, like an eyebrow, okay, then hence it is named as uh, Toxoplasma gondii. And now uh, it is a very common parasite uh, causing infection in humans and it is widely distributed in many animals as well as uh, in birds. So, humans get the infection from the animals and that's why it is referred as zoonotic infection. Mostly the feline animals will be the definitive host for this uh, infection and uh, these feline hosts, they transmit the infection to humans and hence it is referred to as the zoonotic infection. They say one third of the human population is infected with this uh, toxoplasma infection but most of the infection will be asymptomatic in nature. So now it is a protozoan parasite, it is a coccidian parasite and it is an in obligate intracellular parasite. Uh, usually it lives inside the reticuloendothelial cells and also other uh, nucleated cells. But sometimes you will be able to appreciate them extracellularly too. And most of the infections are asymptomatic in nature. Uh, the disease gets manifested in uh, immunocompromised individuals, uh, especially in HIV patients who have reached the AIDS stage and uh, other immunocompromised patients and it gets manifested as uh, toxoplasma encephalitis. And uh, it causes severe disease in developing fetus, so it is a common cause of congenital infection if the mother is infected with this particular parasitic infection and uh, uh, we have a panel of tests that helps you to detect whether the mother is infected with this uh, particular infection. So uh, what do you call it as the torch panel where we detect toxoplasma, rubella, cytomegalovirus and herpes virus. So coming to the morphology of uh, toxoplasma, Usually, it occurs in three forms. One is the trophozoite. It is also called as tachyzoite. They are the actively multiplying forms of the parasite. Then we have the tissue cyst. And then uh, this is the is usually present in the chronic stage of the parasite. And then we have the woo cyst. And these three forms uh, will be present in the feline host. So, feline hosts are the definitive hosts and you can uh, see all the three forms in these animals. Whereas, in humans, you will be able to demonstrate the trophozoites, the tachyzoites and the tissue cyst. You will not be able to demonstrate the woo cyst. However, all the three forms are infective in nature. So now the asexual multiplication stages include the trophozoite, the tachyzoid and the tissue cyst whereas the sexual forms are the oocyst and this oocyst uh, usually will be present in the feline host. So coming to the morphology of the trophozoite, they are also called as tachyzoids. They are the actively multiplying forms of the parasite. So they are crescent shaped or oval shaped. So, only from the structure of the tachyzoids, uh, we got the name uh, toxoplasma. And one end of the tachyzoid will be pointed, the other end will be rounded. Uh, so, this is the blunt end 
and towards the blunt end you will be able to see the nucleus. So the size of the tachyzoid will be 3 micrometer to 7 micrometer in size. And uh, this tachyzoid, though they are the actively multiplying forms of the parasite, uh, they do not have uh, flagella, cilia or pseudopodia, but they are motile uh, by, by a special form of motility, what you call it as the gliding motility. So now this is the typical structure of a trophozoite or the tachyzoite. So it, it has got that arc shape and this is the nucleus which is present at the blunt end of the parasite. And these are the other structures which are present at the apical end of the parasite. So the structures include the conoid, uh, uh, which helps the tachyzoid to penetrate inside the host cell. And then we have the micronemes, uh, which helps in uh, binding to the host cell. And then we have this rob trees and the dense granules, which is present in the cytoplasm. Uh, so, these uh, provide a good uh, environment for the, for the parasite to multiply. 